Hello and welcome to InvestorToday.ca. I'm your host, Dave Glover. InvestorToday.ca is brought to you in conjunction with RBL Communications, your online IR professionals. It is Thursday, the 27th of September, and we are live at the Toronto Resource Investment Conference, another Cambridge House show. And with me is Mickey Falk. Mickey, always a pleasure to see My you. Place, Dave. Now, the last time we spoke was Vancouver. That's right. And things were really in the doldrums. But since then, we've seen some pretty good momentum on, on a lot of the junior companies companies in particular. Can we talk a little bit about that? Sure, and, and we kind of predicted that. Didn't see any catalyst before Labor Day. Well, Labor Day comes, everybody comes back to work. There's more volume, more volume leads to higher market capitalizations. The juniors are somewhere about 10% up from the summer's lows, and that and that would be on the venture exchange, which serves as a proxy, or, or the venture a index, which serves as a proxy for the exchange. Uh, a lot of that can be uh, laid right at the feet of Draghi and Bernanke, because they came in, they did QE3, right. and it shot the price of gold up well over $100 within that time period. Price of gold's held in fairly well, and so that probably led to a risk on appetite and so the juniors being very risky uh, we've mm -hmm. seen a little bump whether that's sustainable or not who knows we saw a bump in january and february that went away and we hit lower lower bottoms so uh... we're hopeful um, but only time will tell. That's right. Well, and of course, with QE3, a, a lot of folks were expecting prices to jump right after Bernanke's uh, statement and the release of QE3's quantitative adjustment. But a lot of the adjustment actually occurred prior to the QE3, probably about two weeks prior. Well, and so there's anticipation in the market. Right. And we've actually seen that anticipation before. And always before, there was disappointment because he didn't come through. But, but the smart money probably knows what's going to happen and it positioned itself we probably didn't get as big a bump but we have gotten a bump in just about every market and 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 the juniors being kind of the lowest to the low generally the micro caps uh, have started to rise and that's good well and that's when you start to see it I think when when the larger markets become saturated and folks start to see that positive momentum come back then you're gonna see folks a little more willing to go on the risk side and that's when you're gonna see a jump in the juniors absolutely couldn't say it any better Dave. there you go and of course the European Union they're starting to sort some of their stuff out so there seems to be a lot of really positive uh, sentiment if you will coming from investors globally would you agree with that Mick? well I and that's reflected in the markets with S&P hitting a four-year low a week or so, or I'm sorry, a four-year high right. a week or so ago. So, yeah, investors are seeing uh, more positive news coming out with quantitative easing. It can be argued whether that's just kicking the can down the road, which I think, or it's going to be sustainable. But uh, investors, speculators are moving back in the market, and that's always good. Well, one of the things we discussed in our last show, which was in Vancouver, was this idea of Americans getting into the Canadian markets. And we've seen, you know, you and I talked about how, how it, was, it was being done and how it was easier for some folks. And there seems to be just a, a great momentum from both the West Coast and the East Coast to, to look north and to try and to get into that market. Well, and that has to do probably with the idea with quantitative easing and and the idea that that banks are risky. Well, where do you put your your money? The historically, the commodities industry and the financial s uh, sector are uh, are. are uh, negatively correlated. Therefore, uh, we are in a bull market for commodities. We think that will be continue for another 10 years or so. So whenever people start feeling better, then they're kind of, especially head funds and some of the smart money, perhaps not so much the retail investor, will go back into commodities. Well, one of the things that was really moving when we spoke last time was graphite. Now, there seems to be somewhat of a cooling off on that market, but there's still a, a lot of real positive momentum with graphite. Do you want to talk about where, where you see graphite, Mickey? Well, graphite made a little run, and then it got hit by lower prices, lower graphite prices. That kind of knocked the froth off the top. Mm -hmm. uh, and in addition, we've had this very bearish summer, and so the graphite, uh, sector as a whole is not done very well, but there are still very good graphite plays that will make mines, and and just so happens I'm on a bit of a graphite tour now. So uh, I was in uh, central Sweden, 
in mid-August. Look at a company I'm involved with that sponsors my website right. called Flinders Resources. Uh, should be in, in full commercial production before the end of 2013, if not just at, uh, barely into 2014. They will be the first new uh, big graphite mine come on in, in production, a past producer. Uh, a couple of days ago, I went up and looked at Focus Graphite, their lac knife deposit, mm -hmm. which is uh, arguably just uh, one of the world's highest grade graphite deposits. They are progressing very nicely. And then right after the show, I go and look at Northern Graphite. Now. And that will generate a newsletter on the graphite industry, and I'll have some more insights then. But uh, it can be argued that these are the three graphite companies that are further along and and are likely to be the first mines in production. Well, and so you'll be putting out uh, you'll be putting out a bit of a paper on that once yeah. you've completed that tour. And folks can always go to Mickey's website, which is www.themercenarygeologist.com, and you can check out all of those companies as well. Now I know you've talked about Flanders a couple of other times as well. What's the, what's the call? Center? For Flanders. We know FDR, that. just like the president. So FDR. So for a lot of folks can remember FDR. Yeah, I mean, who could right. forget the the New Deal, as it were? Yeah. Speaking of which, yeah, which got us a lot of the problems that we're we're reaping uh, 60 years later. That's what I was. You know, my next question was: We have an election coming up in the United States, and a lot of investors are sort of holding back to wait and see uh, whether or not we're going to see a change in the White House. Uh, I'm not asking you necessarily to make a prediction on who do you think is going to get back in. But how do you think that it has overall affected the mood of investors right now? Well, I think it's led to some cautiousness until uh, we do have a new president. We know who's going to be elected. And, uh, and hopefully uh, those results are now already baked into people's perception of the market. You never quite know, but uh, um, all we can do is wait and see, Dave, and be patient. Well, that's what it's all about. It's about patience. You know, if you're if you're going to get into the investing market and you think you're going to be doing a, a quick flip, it's not like buying used cars, folks, okay? You're talking about long-term, in most cases, you want to put your money somewhere where you can watch it grow. Well, and that's not this business. This is not a growth business. This is a speculative business. This is where you put the money that I would say is your discretionary income mm -hmm. that you can afford to lose. This is really gambling in this sector. The thing you're able to do is you wouldn't go to a, to a casino and play roulette because that's you have no ability uh, to influence. That's just pure luck. But you, maybe if you're a good poker player, blackjack player, you go to the casino and play that because you can skew the odds in your favor. Right. And that's what we're able to do in the junior resource sector through good, strong due diligence with share structure people projects, look for undervalued stocks when no one else wants to buy them, buy them when they double, sell half, play with somebody else's money. There you go. So that's sound advice for anybody. And as always, Mickey, I want to thank you for taking your time for joining us here at InvestorToday.ca. Mickey Fubb, I'm going to give you the last word for investors. What's your last thing to say, well, last quarter of the year? Uh, I don't know where the markets are going, but nothing has changed. You still have to do your due diligence, no matter what talking heads like me stand up and say in front of a camera or a microphone. It's up to you. It's your money. You are not me, and I am not you. And my uh, investment goals, my speculation goals are different than everybody else's. So please do your own due diligence before you wade into this sector. Again, the website is www.mercenarygeologist.com. I've been talking to Mickey Fop. This is the Toronto Resource Investment Conference, the 27th. I'm Dave Glover for InvestorToday.ca. We'll see you next.